This is Max Williams with United Real Estate, and today I'm in the city of Richmond. More specifically, I am in the fan, and today we're going to take a look at a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath home. This home is situated on a corner lot, and if you are all familiar with the city of Richmond, uh, surely you recognize the fan. The fan is one of the most popular urban neighborhoods. It is a historic district. Uh, we've got uh, both state and federal designation here and uh, that just simply means uh, that there's some benefits for someone that wants to renovate property. Uh, there's some protections as far as what you can and cannot do uh, to the properties as well. So uh, those things are in place to try to preserve what's here uh, in this historic district. This is a renovated property and there are a couple things I wanted to talk about in regard to a historic renovation. A historic renovation is a little different than what we typically see in non-historic renovations uh, and there's some things that uh, some people love and some people find problematic. Uh, there are purists in the world and they love to see things taken back as closely to original as possible. One of those things are windows and you can see here we have wood windows. One of the things uh, if someone is trying to do a historic renovation that the authorities will look for is they don't want to see replacement windows. They don't want to see vinyl. Vinyl is not in keeping with the historic character or even the even close to the materials that were used back in 1907. So they like to keep it as original as possible uh, with uh, some of set exceptions, of course. Naturally, we don't burn coal anymore. This is a coal burning fireplace. And the way that I can tell that is when you look at the depth, the part on the floor that's black is only about nine inches deep. And uh, that means that we cannot burn wood there. So it is strictly decorative. Uh, they keep those fireplaces in place because it's part, of course, the historic charm and character of the building. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out, these are functional radiators. This is, home does have a two-zone heating and air system, uh, which it's very cool in here now, feels great. Uh, but that is a functional radiator system, uh, as with many homes in the district. Okay, you can see we've got beautiful design here. The floors are just absolutely amazing. They show plenty of character. They're not necessarily perfect, but someone that's interested in a home like this isn't looking for perfect floors. They're looking for character, charm, and the historic integrity that this home provides. Okay, as we can see here, this is a very typical feature in these older homes, these pocket doors. The pocket doors, of course, provide for you to separate the rooms, and they conveniently go back into, if I can get enough strength, there we go, to push it back into the wall. And so it just makes a nice way to kind of customize your floor plan depending on your needs at the time. Of course, a second fireplace, nice tall ceilings. It's, it may be a little difficult for you to uh, see that in the video, but they are very tall ceilings. Here in the kitchen, this of course is a total renovation. Uh, they came in, did recessed lights. We've got this beautiful stainless range hood. Uh, this inlay, we've seen this before. You've seen this before on some of my videos. I just really love the look of it. Of course, our pot filler. Not every day we come across pot fillers in real estate. Five burner gas range. This is a quartz countertop, and uh, they've done a really nice job with giving a great complement of cabinetry. These are definitely 42 inch, they may even be bigger than 42 inch cabinets. Right over here, we have a wine cooler. Um, conveniently located. If you don't drink wine, your 40 ounce beverage of choice can of course go there instead. Uh, additional cabinets, excuse me, counter space here. We have a wall oven and microwave right there. And our refrigerator is built in. You can see we've got the nice tall cabinet complete with the molding at the very top, our farmhouse sink and this side is completed with the stainless Frigidaire dishwasher. Okay, just very nicely done. As you can see, we're gonna back here towards the rear of the property. Here to the right is going to be a little space where you can put coats, uh, put boots down below. This is our equivalent of a mudroom because we are close to the back door. 
We've got a really good looking black and white tile powder room here, nice and bright. We see that window goes all the way up virtually to the ceiling and a nice pedestal sink as well. As we move back towards the rear, this is a very good use of space because they gave us a really nice size office. Uh, this is not something that we see very often in this type of floor plan. We've got a ceiling fan in there, so it'd be a perfect place to put a home office here on the first floor. This home does have a rear staircase. There's one in the front as well. We're gonna pop out back and see here what we have in the rear. We do have a partially finished basement. Those steps are a little steep and I'm not gonna go ahead and risk it uh, by going down and trying to talk and maneuver my camera at the same time. Fortunately, there is no laundry down there, so you don't have to go to the basement to do laundry like you do in many of our historic homes. Okay, here in the back, we have a deck. The deck is actually even with the ground, so it's kind of a neat uh, design there. Uh, we do have a good amount of grass back here, and the garages in this area typically are not modern type garages where you can put a whole lot of uh, personal property. This is a one car garage uh, and it's fairly uh, rustic. I'll use that word rustic. We do, however, have electricity uh, back here. They put some outlets in and there is also an opener. So you just pull simply into the alleyway and uh, come on, park the car in here. You have some additional space in here so you could actually put probably a uh, work uh, bench uh, back here in the rear and some additional shelving for storage. Okay, let's go on back in and see what we have in store inside. I know inevitably when I do ha cover houses down here in this district, somebody will come on and they'll say, well, gee, Max, that house is overpriced. And yeah, the homes here command far more per square foot than most other areas in Metro Richmond. However, you can't say a house is overpriced if it's market value. It just simply means it's more money than you want to spend, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's overpriced. We've got to be very careful in real estate when we're talking about terminology because slight variations in words can mean a whole lot of different things. And you want to make sure you're always accurate, uh, not only in real estate, but in, in anything in life. You want to be accurate in how you describe things, but in real estate, it obviously translates into dollars and cents. So you want to be crystal clear exactly what someone is saying and what you interpret. Let me give you a quick example. A lot of people get mixed up with the terms appraisal and assessment. Assessment is simply the number, the shot in the dark, that the city or the county puts on a property for evaluation purposes in regard to taxes. It's had no, it has nothing to do with the actual market value. They are often way off. So you don't want to depend on assessment for value. An appraisal is done by a licensed appraiser here in this or any other state. And it is actually a valuation done by a subject matter expert that illustrates what the value is for a particular property. So two very different concepts. It's important to make sure we get those right. Okay, this is where our staircase, our back staircase came up. And I just wanted to orient you. We're gonna start here at the back of the house. This is gonna be a secondary bedroom. Although it's very large, great bedroom here. This home coming in over 2,900 square feet. Here to the left is going to be our hall bath. Once again, I love that black and white tile on the floor. Just a really nice, timeless look. Our pedestal sink and our seat right here with a view. Nicely done. We've got ceramic tile here in the bath and a little cubby there for your bath products. Here to the left, oh, I didn't notice this before. We've got a nice skylight here. This is nice because it gives you a little additional light here in this hallway, and there's nothing like good natural light. This is gonna be bedroom number two. Uh, once again, a really good size. You could get an adult size bed and plenty of furniture in here with no problem. Uh, a very good size closet considering when these homes were built, you were lucky if you got three or four feet. So that's a really nice upgrade. Really good looking hardware here. You can see we've got the uh, period door handle there. 
just really contributes to the overall look and feel of this home. Second floor laundry, your wash and dryer, of course, would go right there. You got some additional space for cabinet or shelving over your large washer and dryer. We're now heading into the master suite. One of the challenges with an older home is of course closet space and this one does not disappoint. Here straight ahead, this would actually be your walk-in closet. So you've got the big window there in the front. They've gone ahead and they've done some compartmentalization. Uh, in this little cubby here, you've got some additional shelves and another bar. You could actually put another bar in there if you needed, but just a nice dedicated space. If you remember from one of my previous videos, I talked about a trunk room, and this was most likely a trunk room, and they just went ahead, uh, framed it out to make it a walk-in closet. So very smart use of space. Okay, we are now in the master. We've got that nice big bay window at the very front overlooking the street. Of course, our decorative coal fireplace and we have another closet here remember you just had that walk-in closet that i showed you so that's another one, small one that could be a nice uh, linen closet in the master okay we're now heading into the master bath and we have our throne right there really good size master bath look at that tub look at that tub golly gorgeous gorgeous layout here i just love what they've done here with this bathroom okay we've got the double vanity and of course our stand-up shower directly ahead now this is not just any shower you've got the gold fixtures there and if two were not enough you got a third right there you got a rectangular overhead shower so you can get hit from two different locations different uh, directions rather and uh, minimize your shower time. Okay, let's take a look at this vanity here. I wanted to show you the design here. This is a pretty unique um, area here. I have never seen one like this, but look at that. Look how that water comes down and then it just cascades down into that grill. Uh, that is a really modern look. Uh, I really like what the rehabber did on this property. This is a real gem here. If you are interested in historic properties, we have so much to offer here in the Metro Richmond area. Uh, that's one thing I love about it. No matter what you're looking for, contemporary, uh, historic, condos, uh, townhomes, traditional subdivisions, you name it, pretty much we have it in Metro Richmond area. If you have questions about this or any other home in the market, it would be an honor for me to help you. Uh, if you have real estate needs in other parts of the country, give me a shout. I'm part of a network and we can put you in touch with somebody that's very good in your area as well. Max Williams, 804-402-7788. It can reach you on Facebook under Richmond Area Foreclosures on YouTube under my name, Max Williams Realtor. Thanks so much for taking the tour. Y'all be safe. Be sure to vote. I'm going to put the link below to uh, Richmond's best real estate agent. I'm in the running for it and the Times Dispatch is taking votes. I would love your support. Thanks so much. Y'all be safe. Have a great day.